I'm a rich guy, but I have this great relationship with the working people of this country. You have offended women, Latinos. They're not sending their best. Veterans. He's a war hero because he was captured. You've been called crass, bigoted, obnoxious. And his wife, Melania, missing on the campaign trail, but speaking up for the first time tonight. Your husband has come under fire for making disparaging remarks about women. Did he make a derogatory comment about her looks? Women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. Does this bother you? He treats everybody the same. The first lady of the Trump empire. But could she be the country's first lady? I don't know how to put this, but your image looking the way you do, is that a liability for your husband? Plus, the Trump children. Who is his favorite? <laughs> And for the first time on TV, all his grandchildren. Hi, sweetheart. The softer side of the Donald you've never seen. Bye, I love you. Tonight, he's got all the real estate he needs. But what about this real estate, the White House? For many, the White House is a step up. I am looking around this room. The White House might be a step down. Could this be your next first family? Meet the Trumps. Good evening, I'm Barbara Walters. And tonight, the Donald Trump you have really maybe never seen before. Not blustering on the campaign trail, but intimate at home. A family portrait with his wife, Melania, in her first sit-down interview since her husband announced his candidacy. Plus, his children and even his grandchildren. So. Here is the inside look at the man who is hoping to hear you are hired. Instead of his signature, you're fired. Oh, 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 you're right. oh, oh, you're right. For years, Donald Trump's life was the stuff the tabloid dreams are made of. What a great honor it must be for you to honor me tonight. The brash billionaire was a real estate mogul, married to three glamorous women. Right down here, Brian. A best-selling author who made cameo appearances in movies. Down the hall and to the left. On television. Go on another 50 grand, I'll cut the grass for you every Saturday. Hey. Even commercials. Hey, yourself. Most recently, he reinvented himself as the host of a reality show, The Apprentice. You're fired. Not the typical resume of a man who aspires to be president. What made you start? running did you have a dream did you get up and say you know what president the time i really thought about it was last time when mitt romney ran and he ran and i decided not to do it and i had a lot of obligations i was signed a contract with the apprentice and i had a lot of buildings under construction i was doing a lot of things it was uh, sort of difficult to do it then now i'm in perfect you know it's perfect although i gave up two seasons of the apprentice you know nbc signed oh. me <laughs> i know it's, but it's still you know what it's a lot of money and it's two years of primetime television yeah. and other things. But this time I said, I'm going to do it myself. But Donald Trump is a candidate unlike any other. Because our leaders are stupid. Stupid, stupid people. Wah. Bing, bing, bong, and that. With his lack of propriety. Donald Trump. Trump has made the theater of politics popular. The only one qualified to interview me is me. But some say it is also less than presidential. You used to call me on the cell phone. We are in that moment today where there seems to be no distinguishing between reality TV, celebrity, and political or hard news. He is the most reality TV star of a candidate that's ever existed at the most reality TV time in America. Your foot is mine. Okay. I first met Donald Trump in 1987. Michael Jackson was at the top of the charts. Hair was big, greed was good. Greed works. And then 41-year-old Donald Trump was flying high. When you look at that wonderful skyline, do you say, I own that, 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 that? Well, I look at that skyline, Barbara, and I really say it's the greatest in the world, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. In the Big Apple, the Trump card was an ace. Anything else you want to buy as you look out there? Any good properties that we can see? I'd really like to buy everything if that were possible. <laughs> I bet you would. What about Central Park? No, I think that should be uh, preserved and left, and Donald Trump should not be allowed to touch Central Park. A lot of people are very relieved. 
But Trump was already dreaming about his next conquest, a future far more grand than just Prince of the City. New York developer Donald Trump charging American foreign policy lacks backbone. Is he running for something? It was the beginning of a long flirtation with the greatest get of all. We're going to see whether or not I'm going to run. Are you running for president? I have never been so serious as I am now. Finally, after almost 30 years, the man who might be president sailed down an escalator for his surreal moment of destiny. I am officially running for president of the United States. His speech was one of the most jaw-dropping presidential bids in history. Country great again. The U.S. has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. We have losers. They're laughing at us. His thoughts about immigration provocative, to say the least. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. How do you plan to do this? Okay, ready? Yeah. First of all, we have to build a wall, we have to create a border. We have to have a wall. We're going to have a wall. It's going to be a real wall, not a little wall that they drive trucks with drugs over the top of it, okay? <laughs> you see the pictures yep. in the newspapers where they have ramps right over the little wall. And it's not going to be hard to build. It's going to be done hey, who's better at building than me? I know exactly what to do. New fallout for Donald Trump's... Unlike any ordinary candidate, people. Trump didn't back off. To... He doubled down and set off a firestorm. We'll call it another Trump dump. Macy's is now cutting ties with Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. When you send these people out, what do you do with the, the women and children? They're going to go with them. Oh, everybody. You, you have to stow. Oh, sure, family. it's got to be a family unit. It's going to be done humanely. You speak your mind, heaven knows. You have in, sometimes offended women, Latinos, veterans. How can you unify the country when you make these divisive statements? Women respect me, they like me, and they know I'm going to take care of them. I'm going to protect them. The people that are here legally, Hispanics, like me because they don't want people coming in and taking their jobs. Do you speak any Spanish? No. This is an English-speaking country, remember? They want to. From the beginning... What the hell are we getting involved for? Come on, His folks, inflammatory comments everything. have drawn criticism from every quarter. Let's go, baby. Trump's running for president like... This is your worst nightmare. Could he actually win? No freaking way! <laughs> Trump is the shock jock of the political campaign. But it's paying off big in the polls. He is now at the top of the pack for the Republican nomination. After you announced your run for the presidency, there was a cover story in the Daily News that showed you as a clown. You've been called crass, bigoted, obnoxious. Any of this bother you, or does it all... No. Nobody calls me a clown now, I can tell you that. And you're right, at the beginning they were doing everything they could. They, you know, everybody was trying to belittle because that's what they do. Now they've gained great respect because I've gone from going into a race that everybody said I wasn't going to enter, and I went bing, bing, up, 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 and now I'm leading by a lot. So I've spent less money, and I'm in number one position. Other people have spent 30, 40 million dollars, and they're dying. I use some words to describe you disparagingly. What words would you use to describe Donald Trump? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the positive. I've, I've always had great imagination. I've had great success with money. But what they say is, is he a nice person? And I think, actually, I, I am a nice person. But I think the thing that will surprise people, I'll be a unifier. I think I'll bring people together. And that includes blacks and whites and everything. I think people will come together. But the man who calls himself a unifier has had a divisive history on the campaign trail. One second, no. I the didn't want to get Donald, oh, you good. cannot take more energy tonight. I like no. that. I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. You have said that one of the most important aspects in your personality is winning. Why winning? What about the, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game? I like winning better. Look, <laughs> we have to win. Okay. Our country has to win. Our country's been losing for so long, it can't go on like this. It's not, we're not going to have a country left. I kid when I say, you're going to win so much if I win the election. You're going to win so much at trade, military, every way. You're going to win so much, you're going to get sick and tired of winning. We lose every single way you can lose, we lose.
And when Paris was attacked in a violent wave of terrorism, candidate Trump blasted back. If they had guns, it would have been a much, much different situation. If you were president, what would you do to protect Americans from such an attack? Would you bomb Syria? I would bomb wherever they are. Right now, we're being so politically correct. Nice and gentle, nice and gentle. We've got a cancer there, and the cancer is ISIS. Life means nothing to them. France has declared a war on ISIS. Should we declare war? I think so. Why not? Because right now, they're getting people who have this great respect for ISIS, because ISIS is getting away with murder. They're knocking out airplanes. They're knocking out nightclubs in Paris. You can't let that happen. You have said that you could reason with anyone from Putin to the Chinese leaders. If you had an opportunity to speak with the leader of ISIS, what would you say? You got to take them out, Barbara, and you got to take them out swiftly and strongly. As far as ISIS is concerned, that's a different thing. These people are crazy, okay? These people are crazy. You call President Obama, I'm quoting, insane for allowing Syrian refugees into this country. We have no idea, Barbara, who they are. If you were in the White House right now, what would you be saying? Oh, I would be saying, let's go, folks. And I would be getting other let's countries. Let's go, folks. Look, I am the most militaristic person. I will make our, our military so strong and so powerful, nobody's going to mess with us. Coming up, a glimpse at a campaign trail like no other. Does anybody want to take a ride? And in rare interviews, Donald Trump's very own First Lady, Melania. Is yours a marriage of equals? His children and even his grandchildren. Next on Meet the Trumps. Donald Trump has always set the gold standard literally for life at the top. His $100 million tri-level penthouse is inspired by Versailles, with a palatial living room, imported crystal chandeliers, hand-painted ceilings trimmed in gold leaf. It has sweeping views of New York City from every side. You have said that success is a kind of drug, and it's too powerful for most people to handle. How do you handle success? Well, a lot of people can handle success. I've seen it. A lot of people can't win. They don't know how to win. You see it in sports where they're right on the threshold of win, and then they can't get it over the line. It's an amazing thing. Winning is, is tough. I always said winning is somewhat maybe innate. Maybe it's just something you have. You know, you have the winning gene, but I've seen it. I've seen great talent, both in business and lots of other things. They should be able to do it, and they can't get the ball over the line. You are a winner? I think so. I mean, <laughs> I'm I think. I'm looking around. Yeah, there's a lot of, I think there's so. a lot of gold I think here. You're done pretty in, well, in right? Sense. He shares this palace in the sky with his beautiful and graceful wife, Melania. Hello. Hello. Who we have? Ah. She has been mostly absent from the campaign trail until tonight. You too. Come join you too. us. Mrs. Trump, it's a pleasure to see you, and we don't see you that often. You're not on the campaign trail. How do you feel about campaigning? Well, it's my choice not to be there. I support my husband 100%, uh, but we have a nine-year-old son together, a Baron, and I'm raising him, and this is the age he needs a parent at home. Were you involved in the decision of your husband to become president? We discuss a lot, yes, and uh, I encourage him. And you I, did? You I encourage, encourage him, him because I know what he will do and what he can do for America. He loves the American people and he wants to help them. Melania and her husband met at a party in 1998 where she caught the eye of the flirtatious Donald Trump. He came up to you, you rebuffed him, yeah? What was your first impression of Donald Trump? Well, he was very charming and uh, uh, he, we had a great sparkle. Uh, he came with a date, so he asked me for the number, and I said, I will not give you my number. So if you give me your numbers, I will, um, I will call you. Uh, and he was known as kind of a ladies' man, and, uh, but we had, <laughs> we met uh, a, f a week later. And then it was okay? Yes, we had the great chemistry the first time. We've had great chemistry ever since. Before she was Melania Trump, 
She was Melania Knaus, born 45 years ago in a small industrial town in Slovenia, when it was still part of Yugoslavia. Melania, a natural beauty, was also a bookworm. She went to university and was studying architecture when she was discovered by a major fashion photographer when she was just 17. Soon after, she left school and Slovenia for New York City. Who would imagine that the quiet girl from Slovenia would end up the wife of a mega billionaire? Their relationship made international news, not just because it was a May-December romance, he is 24 years older, but because of Donald's previous two high-profile marriages and even higher-profile divorces. Are you following the Trump thing? You can't miss it. The latest dispatch from the front in the battle of Trump versus Trump. The front page fiasco of lovers, lawyers, and large settlements. The first, a 13-year-old marriage to the stunning Czech model, Ivana Zelenkova, and the second to actress Mala Maples. At last, they are Mr. and Mrs. Trump. I give it four months. Actually, it lasted just under four years. But today, it seems the third time is indeed the charm. It's been 10 years since Donald and Melania said, I do, in a lavish affair at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. One year later, they welcomed a son, Baron, who is now nine. This is your third marriage. What's different this time? Well, I think I understand life. I've gone through uh, tremendous amounts of everything, deals and building companies and taking care of How people. How does that help marriage? And, well, it hurts marriage because you're working all the time. What I did is I worked so hard that I think it was a very, very hard thing for somebody to compete with. Your husband has been married twice before. Did you have any concerns that it might not work out? No, I didn't have any concerns. Uh, we have a great chemistry, and to be with the man as my husband is, uh, you need to know who you are. So you need to have a very independent life as well, and supporting him. You need to be very smart and quick, and be there for him when he needs you. Is yours a marriage of equals? I would say yes. I would say no, no, I think she's far Greater than the 50 percent. <laughs> no, I, I, we, have, we have a very, very, pretty much equal relationship, yes. wouldn't you say? Melania, how do you do? How do you do? But if the Trumps win the White House, Melania will have two noteworthy distinctions. The first foreign-born first lady since John Quincy Adams' wife, Louisa, and the first first lady to have posed in a picture like this. I don't know how to put this, but your image looking the way you do. Is that a liability for your husband? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think people will always judge. Maybe they will say, oh, the past that you have, the way you were modeling. That's part of the job that I was doing. I was a very successful model. And I did some photo shoots. Uh, yes, they were a li little risky, but nothing more than you see every year in Sport Illustrated. She was actually in Sports Illustrated, which I just saw that picture the other day. It was beautiful. But I will say this, if I'm lucky enough to win, the public will be so lucky to have Melania as the first lady. She will be so beautiful and elegant and good from the heart. She will be a fabulous first lady. First ladies are expected to have a cause. If you have a cause, what would it be? I'm very involved in charities now, many, many charities, involving children, involving uh, many different diseases. And I will, you know, when, if the time comes, I will choose what is dearest to my heart and um, work on that 100%. Do you give your husband any advice on the debates? We discuss, I tell him my opinions. Give me an example of a piece of advice that you've given your husband that he has taken. I will keep it private. <laughs> well, she's told me, I and mean, I can tell you, she's told me a couple of times during the debate, she was very happy with my performances, if you want to call them a performance, but she said you could tone it down a little bit on occasion, which I understand. In the center of the stage tonight, businessman Donald Trump. And speaking of tone, I wondered if Melania had ever taken her husband to task on his tone toward women on the campaign trail. Did he make a derogatory comment attacking Carly Purina? Insulting the way she looked. He said, look at that face. Would anyone vote for that? I think women all over this country heard very clearly what Mr. Trump said. You know your husband has come under fire here and there for making disparaging remarks about women. Does this bother you? 
it doesn't bother me. He treats everybody the same. He talked about men as well, not about the women only. Maybe they just uh, go into a little bit more details when he says something about the women. While Melania laments the amount of time campaigning costs their marriage, the couple insists that at heart, they're homebodies. When he comes home, we spend time together, two of us or two of us and Baron. Just be at home because that's a really quality time together. And why not? When for now, home is this lavish penthouse apartment, not Pennsylvania Avenue. For many, the White House is a step up. I am looking around this room. The White House might be a step down. <laughs> the White House is the White House. It's just a, a spectacular place. And, you know, it's uh, something that represents something very special. Next, the brand, the Boeing, the billions. I'm really rich. But is all that bankable at the ballot box? What's the downside of being part of the 1% of the richest people in America, especially when you're trying to reach the middle class? When we return. Donald Trump allowed us rare behind the scenes access to his life on the campaign trail for Trump Membership in the Billionaires Club does have its privileges. He travels on what is known as Trump Force One, a Boeing 757 that seats dozens of passengers. It has bedrooms, a theater system, and gold-plated fixtures in the bathroom and on the seat belts. Monogrammed on the headrests is the Trump family crest. For Donald Trump, this is the only way to fly. They've never had anybody that owned a Boeing 757 before. It's a little bit of an unusual thing. Donald Trump, unlike most other candidates, is rich enough to bankroll his own campaign. I'm really rich. I'll show you that. He flaunts his wealth candidly. $8,737,540,000. You might think all his billions would alienate working class voters, but Trump says it's really a plus. We don't want your help. I'm the only one that's self-funding. I'm not selling myself to special interests. But he does use his $7 million helicopter as a political sideshow. Does anybody want to take a ride? <laughs> it made quite a splash at the Iowa State Fair. What amazes you most? His golf courses, his resorts, him himself. In a way, Donald Trump was born ready. The fourth of Fred and Mary Trump's five children, he grew up in the construction business. His father, a real estate tycoon, built middle and low income housing. He always knew how to get what he wanted. His brother Robert was no match for his schemes, as he told me in our first interview. Robert had a set of blocks and I had a set of blocks and I asked Robert if I could have his blocks and I built a beautiful tall block building and then I said I like it so much that I glued it together and then Robert couldn't have his block. So I don't know, somehow that story is a story that a lot of people have asked me about, I don't know. What but do you think it I says? Have, I have, well, it says that just even at a young age, I wasn't so much different than I am now. That relentless desire to win made his name a modern synonym for success. If flaunting it was the game, Trump was the name. In the 80s, his fiery mix of hubris and vision caused him to win and lose fortunes. You gonna fight it to the bitter end? I always fight to the bitter end, don't I? But today, the Trump kingdom is an empire. From international hotels, to golf courses, even a winery. The name Trump is such a brand for success that it has been licensed on an astonishing range of products. It's a great tasting vodka. Trump model management. What does this guy not have his name on? <laughs> the reason my real estate is successful is they know if I put the name Trump on it, it's going to be the best. What's the downside of being part of the 1% of the richest people in America, especially when you're trying to reach the middle class? Well, there's a certain loneliness that you have, but that's made up when you have a great family. I have a great family, fantastic family. I have a wonderful wife. But the funny thing is, I'm a rich guy, but I have this great relationship with the working people of this country, and that's true. What vein do you think you have touched? The vein of people are tired of being led by 
leaders, if you call them leaders, that are virtually incompetent. I love you, Trump says he is a man of the people. Others say he's the P.T. Barnum of politics. Whatever the answer, he's been playing to crowds of thousands. Donald Trump speaks the truth. He's not a politician, he's not paid off. Well, he's so damn good looking, what do you think? His theme song is his message, and it has definitely hit a nerve. We're not gonna take it anymore! <laughs> On this night, Trump owns the crowd. The number one value people are, interestingly, are looking for is authenticity. Is it real? Is it really real? He comes across, he, at times, as a bully, but people will take a bully who's strong over somebody else they think is nice who's weak. We have people that are just so pathetic. Without question. We said no. Wrong. The bluntness of his shock in our campaign. Sit down. Keeps pushing buttons and boundaries in every way. There's going to be change, but real change, not Obama change. You remember? The next president, Donald J. Trump. Trump is still the wild card in this election, a power broker, whether he wins or loses. If you lose the nomination, what next for Donald Trump? Well, look, you can lose the nomination, you can lose the election. What's next? I go back to what I was doing. I built a great company. Make America great again! But I think this is just a greater calling. I mean, this is the ultimate calling. President Trump! When we come back, the Trump children, all grown up and unplugged. You have said, Ivanka, of your father, that he bred you to compete with each other. The kids on Trump guilt, and who's their father's favorite? <laughs> Next. For every kid, there comes a point where your parents stop being cool. The things they say... It's gonna be you. The things they do... Call me on the cell phone. I swear it's cool. But the Trump children swear they are the exception. Do any of you make fun of your father's hair? <laughs> well, I, I like not to because you never know what happens genetically. <laughs> and, you know, I'm it's it is funny years. because it's the only hair we've ever known, but yeah, people sure. seem fascinated. This week, I sat down with Donald Trump's four oldest children. Donald Jr., 37, Ivanka, 34, Eric, 31, and Tiffany, 22. And not surprisingly, they all think their father would make the perfect president. What makes your father tick? Work. Uh, honestly, work and family. He's the last man you'll ever see that'll take three weeks and go to Aspen or three weeks and go somewhere. I mean, he loves, he loves work. I need a quick show of hands. Which one of you is most like your father? <laughs> I, I, well, yeah. but in fairness, I think we're all like him in very different sure. ways. You know, it's actually very scary. We can go to Thanksgiving, right? And we can all no, we'll sit there and pick answer <laughs> the same question using the exact same words in the same sequence. Trumpisms. I, I relish those holiday meals because we can really sort of let loose. I mean, it is a, it is a show, I mean, in and of itself. I mean, it's funny and we have a good time uh, making fun of each other and just having a, a blast. I first met Don Jr., Ivanka, and Eric, his children by his first wife, Ivana, in 2004. The subject was nepotism. Do you ever try to hide your name? Um, I'd be lying if I said I didn't, especially when I was younger. There were times when it was just, you didn't want to have to deal with everyone making those assumptions however ignorant they may be, that I don't say, you know, introduce myself as just Don or something like that, avoid the last name at all costs. Today, all three wear their last name as a badge of honor, working as executive vice presidents at the family we business. Combine it with this, so that adds value to that apartment. But Tiffany, Trump's daughter by his second wife, Marla Maples, is a senior at her father's alma mater, the University of Pennsylvania, with plans to go to law school. Tiffany, people are meeting you today, many people for the first time. Yes. To grow up with the name Tiffany Trump, yes. that's not easy. I think that it's, it's all I know. I'm ha so happy to be Tiffany Trump. I'm so happy to be you know, in the family I'm in with my siblings and my father and my mother. Your father has said that he was not, I'm using his words, very present 
when you were growing up. I would challenge him on that yeah. because yeah. he was very available to us and accessible to us. Regardless of what he was doing, regardless of who he was meeting with, if we called, he took the phone. I mean, oh, from when we were okay. six years old, I'd call. He'd be negotiating with the CEO of a major bank or whatever it may be. <laughs> and he would make them wait, he'd take the call from us. Our times together were learning, you know, playing in his office. He would always sneak me down to uh, get a candy bar, you know, in the lobby. He found a way that was true to him to connect with us that maybe is a little less traditional. You know, his work is his passion and he found a way to share it with us. They say their father also taught them to respect the value of a dollar. He was the first to tell us how privileged we are and with that privilege how much responsibility we had to to really sort of earn what we were so lucky to have been afforded since since birth. Well that's the right word earn. I mean he made us work. We were on construction sites and we were working and at the end of the day you were tired and you earned minimum wage and you take that money that you had and you go out and spend on something good. To say we weren't spoiled would be laughable but we were spoiled with great education, great experiences, but we weren't the kids yeah. showing up to college with you know, a, a Ferrari. We always had to sort of earn whatever it is that we wanted, and that, I think, prevented us from doing a lot of the other things that you've seen as you know, downfalls, perhaps, in other children who have uh, similar circumstances. And it seems the Donald Trump work ethic is in their DNA. You better do a good job or you're fired. <laughs> and we refer to it as the Trump guilt. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's when we wake up on Saturday and we're not working. You have said, Ivanka, of your father, that he bred you to compete with each other. What do you compete over? I think we all have a very competitive spirit, and I think that can be harnessed in one of two ways. F to our detriment, meaning that we're competitive in spite of ourselves, or for the positive, which means we push each other. Who is his favorite? <laughs> I'm going with Ivanka. <laughs> I'm going with Ivanka. <laughs> Ivanka, sweetie, sweetie. Ivanka is perhaps the most well-known of the quartet. The former model turned fashion mogul has taken a page out of her father's business playbook, putting her name on everything from shoes to handbags, fragrance. She says she is proud to be following in her father's footsteps. Today, I have the honor of introducing a man who needs no introduction. How is it decided that you would be the one who would introduce your father as a presidential candidate? That's an excellent question, and I don't know actually how it was decided, but I was honored to do it, and I feel like I was standing there sort of representing our family. And she did an amazing job, yeah. by the way. She She's a great amazing. messenger. She got such great poise. I think it also, the way Ivanka delivered the message was perfect, and I don't think any of us could have and done she, better. And she absolutely has beauty over the two of us. So. Yes, there, there, there's definitely an element that uh, yeah, we ain't got that. They say they all are their father's biggest cheerleaders, supporting him at the debates and on social media. Has your father ever said anything on the campaign trail that made you cringe? Truthfully, no. No? 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 He's not a big believer in PC culture where every statement you make you have to vet very carefully through thousands of people. But if people really break down what he's trying to say, th there's no malice in there. He's just cutting through the nonsense and getting to the point and not wasting time. That's what he does. He's true to himself and he speaks in a way that the average person can understand. I think that's refreshing for everyone. Well, you have been saying the most wonderful things about your father. You should be very pleased and proud. If there is one thing you could change about your father, what would it be? Listen, I don't think any of us would be sitting here glowing the way we are if we'd want to change aspects of his personality or who he something. is. I mean, something. We there really... Something that's... I want him to eat healthier. I agree. There you go. I, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I agree with that. A hundred percent. Sometimes I'll tell him, like, oh, you have to, you know, slow down, but it's the only speed he knows. And I, and I kind of love that about him. He's I'm not going to get one thing. I love the occasional, you know, Saturday morning where I don't get the call at five o'clock, like, why aren't you in the office? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> come, on, come on, you had to do that? Sleep a little yeah. bit more. Uh, he's, he's a, he's a great but he's an amazing guy, and I wouldn't change a thing about him. I mean, he really is a unique individual. There's no one else like him. Still ahead, the littlest Trumps. And Barbara asking the really up close and personal questions. What do you dislike most about your appearance? On what occasions do you lie, not tell the truth? But what's the question he won't answer? Next. At the end of our interview, we turned from talking about Trump's candidacy to talking about the man. Who is he? What makes him tick? 
Forbes. I asked him some questions often seen in Vanity Fair magazine. My fantasy when I was very young was to be a nightclub singer. Wow. Didn't happen. What was your fantasy when you were very young? To be a baseball player. I was a great baseball player. What position? First base, catcher, mm -hmm. first base. But in those days, you got paid two dollars, right? <laughs> and that's not for Donald Trump. I mean, no. But my other fantasy, as I got older, was to do uh, movies. I wanted to be a movie maker, and I decided not to. Uh, I decided to go into the real estate business, but I wanted to make movies. Make them, not be in them. No, no, not be. No, make them. I wanted to make them. What do you dislike most about your appearance? I like my appearance. <laughs> I mean, people would say, my, hair, my hair's not bad. It. You know it's my hair. Last time you started pulling my hair with your great show last time. Is this part of your image, or is it covering a bald spot? It's a funny thing. I've always, like, combed it this way. I was probably maybe a you little bit more... you always combed it down? Well, I really don't. It's really combed back. If you really look, it's combed sort of back. Come on, Barbara, get over here. Now you're going to mess it up for this interview. No, okay. the optics. There. Well, after that, everyone knows it's real. Okay, I'll go on. What is your greatest fear? Well, I don't want to reveal fears, because if I reveal fears, I'm giving up something. This is what I say. I hate when I see generals being interviewed, because they're telling things that the enemy... I don't like revealing weaknesses. And, you know, we all have certain fears, and everybody has fears, but I don't like revealing my fears. Okay, what's the trait you most deplore in yourself? Well, it's the one I like best, and it's the one that it's a little bit tough for people. I never, ever quit. I never give up. And in one way, that can be a little aggravating to people. In another way, I think it's a good trait. What do you dream about most frequently? I have good dreams, just having a good life. Good family, good life, so important. You know, Bob, I see people that are very wealthy, friends of mine that are immensely wealthy people, the wealthiest people in the world. A lot of them aren't happy. They don't have a good family life. They don't have a good marriage. They don't have good kids, or their kids are on drugs. And the happiest people I see are people that have a great family life. On what occasions do you lie? Do I? Lie. Not tell the truth. Well, I think I will oftentimes, and I don't call it a lie, I call it a fib. If somebody's not looking good, I never would say that. I'll say, you're looking good, or you're feeling good, how are you doing? And somebody could say that's a lie or it's a fib, but they don't look good. But, you know, I, I do it. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Believe it or not, I have a lot of feeling toward that. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Is there anything that you want that you don't have? Well, I think the one thing that I want right now is the presidency. I will do a great job. And I'll make a lot of people happy. It'll be a very positive thing. I don't need it for myself, for my ego. I just think I do a great job. You've met the children. Now meet the grandchildren. Donald Trump kissing babies. Bye. Next. Once again, Barbara Walters with Meet the Trumps. Hello, Grandpa. It's a very different side of Donald Trump, the soft one. Breaking from the daily grind, to greet his seven grand.